Hey there, everybody. This is Kaylee McMahon with Number One Leading Ladies. You already know me. We have a special guest today. We're going to talk a little bit about um, her business and what she does. This is Savannah Arroyo. Uh, Savannah, would you introduce yourself to our guests on our podcast? Hi, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm Savannah. I go by the net worth nurse. Um, I am a full time registered nurse and I invest in multifamily real estate. Very cool. That was a, <laughs> an easy introduction. Um, so I know exactly what to put the, uh, the podcast title as. Um, so what we focus on here at um, Number One Leading Ladies is building each other up instead of tearing each other down. I think that there's um, a power that is um, not being recognized or not being utilized. I think right now the fact that women are naturally collaborative and being able to build each other up. Uh, so that's what we focus on on this podcast uh, one thing that we can do to help each other is to educate each other on the process of starting a business, uh, you know, lessons that we've learned so that we can either get ahead quicker or, again, be collaborative and work together. Um, so one thing that as a new business or a startup, typically a lot of uh, people go through the process of figuring out, okay, how do I fund my first business? Um, how do I get started, get going, and then get from getting started maybe like me, putting your first business on a credit card, getting all the way to traction where people you know, either want your service or they want to work with you. Um, so what did, it, what did that process look like from um, you know, getting started to then actually seeing that it was working and getting to traction? Yeah, definitely. I love that you mentioned that because there definitely is a gap right there. And if you're not prepared for that gap of actually potentially receiving revenue or generating income or just creating something a little more in abundance, if you're not ready for that gap that it takes to put in all the work to get there, a lot of that's where a lot of people give up. So um, for me specifically, um, getting started in real estate investing, it w- I had a huge motivation behind it. I um, had just had my second daughter. I was on maternity leave with her and getting ready to go back into work and just trying to think of different ways to create passive income. I mean, my husband and I were sitting down and we're like, Hey, we both work, you know, Monday through Friday, eight to four 35. And a few years from now, our daughters are going to start going to soccer practice, swimming, field trips. Like our schedules didn't really, it couldn't accommodate that kind of stuff. And so we were like, we need to put ourselves in a position where we can either work part time or just have more flexibility with our schedules. And so that was when we started learning about investing and investing specifically in real estate. And um, really up until then, we had been putting a majority, a big chunk of our paycheck towards our 401ks, 15 to 20 percent. That was really all we knew. Uh, The majority of Americans, I mean, that's what they're doing with their paycheck and how they're investing for retirement. And for us, it was just so defeating to think we're putting all this money, you know, hundreds of dollars every paycheck towards this retirement account that we can't touch till we're 65. And it's like, Hey, we're growing our family. What if we want to eventually, we need to buy a new car from now. Like we couldn't even tap into that capital. So it just didn't make sense for us to be putting all that money, um, in that, in that way. So we, um, kind of changed strategies and really that biggest piece was education. So educating ourselves on what we were doing, how we could make our money work for us, listening to podcasts, reading books, watching YouTube videos, and then networking. That was a huge piece too. And I think especially what you touched on with women and then getting to the point where you're actually kind of generating from your business is networking with people who are already doing what you're doing. And that's where I love, I mean, especially connecting with other women in real estate because it's such a male dominated field that you feel very intimidated coming into it. But the more that you start connecting with women, especially in real estate, it's just such an entrepreneurial mindset, motivating, encouraging, inspiring, and connecting yourself with those people while you're starting your business is so essential because they've, especially people who are kind of at a place where you want to be because they've been there and you can touch on them. Hey, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm struggling with. And you can just kind of create that network and community of ideas and encouragement. Yeah. So you guys kind of got started by doing the typical, you know, 401k uh, type investing. Uh, Now getting to the point where you're receiving distributions or what we call mailbox money. um, Mm -hmm. What what did that take? What process uh, had to happen for y'all to, you said learn, you know, and then once you learned, what specifically did you learn? You know, I know that you're in multifamily um, and I know, I think what your answer is going to be, but maybe for the people that are watching or listening for the first time that don't know that you can even do that, like on the back of my business card, I put on there that you can use your pension, you can use your teacher retirement savings, you can use all kinds of stuff to get into in in different type of investments that cash flow. But uh, what did it take for you to change to then kind of wait for a bit, I guess, and then get those mailbox checks to see like traction? 
Yeah, definitely. So I'm going to say two things. The first one was signing up for a coaching mentorship program and then Mm -hmm. having someone who's been doing very heavily great experience with what we want to be doing and connecting with him to kind of get the confidence to move forward because we're syndicating multifamily deals. So we're pooling together. A syndication is essentially just people pooling together capital resources to go out and buy apartment buildings. So now we're doing that and we it's created a team sport. We do it with other investors. So we're handling friends and family's money to create great returns in real estate. And so it was important for us to have the mentorship coach to kind of guide us through that. So we weren't making really big, expensive mistakes. And then the second piece, how you said just And that gave us the education of different ways to tap into capital. So for us, like we wanted to get started in real estate investing, but like yourself, we're like, okay, where are we going to get that money? We didn't have any. We've been putting it all towards our retirement accounts. So then we were talking to a lender. This was at the start of COVID about refinancing our house. And he was like, oh, you have $100,000 worth of equity in your home. You could pull it out and start investing. And we... That just seems so scary. You hear people like Dave Ramsey advise against that. You'll hear other people who are super conservative who are like, don't, you know, the goal is to pay off your house. And so for us, it just took further education. Like when we heard our lenders say that, we started talking to other people who have done that. Hey, how did you use your home equity to start investing? What did that look like for you? Um, Like, what are the benefits of that? And it's like, when you think about it, if you can pull out a second mortgage on your home at 4%, 5% max, right, right now, and then you're investing it in a real estate investing that's giving you 15, 20% on your returns. It's, it's a no brainer. I mean, you're making all that money back to pay off that mortgage and some. So now you're putting your money to work for you. And it took really kind of talking to other people who have done that to be like, oh, okay. Cause like our parents and our small circle of you know, friends, that's very foreign to them, not knowing really yeah. how to make money work for you. And so if you're talking about these ideas with your friends and family, like my parents would be like, no way, you know, don't do that. That's, that's super risky. But then when you start talk, talking to savvy real estate investors, they're like, oh, yeah, you have to do that. It's a numbers game. This is how you leverage debt to start creating other money. So that was really a big shift for us, for us of surrounding ourselves with people who are knowledgeable in that sense. And then, I mean, since then, we talked to Nora home for a second mortgage. We pulled out our retirement account under the CARES Act. I pulled out some of my retirement on a loan. So there's so many. You can pull out life insurance policies. You can roll over your IRAs into um, self-directed IRA accounts. So once you start surrounding yourselves with these people, all those people are doing it. You know, they're just tapping into all this capital to push it into different investments. Yeah, I mean, just accounting is important. You know, that takes away a lot of the risk because it's like, you know what you're uh, paying, you know what you're spending, you know, you know what the difference between what you're spending, and what you're earning is basically is just like every other business. So that's important to reduce risk. I think people that just say, oh, it's risky because they just don't know, you know, but if yeah. you do some pretty good accounting or I have other people do it, you know, then mm-hmm. you can keep accountable for what your, um, you know, in and out is, is uh, just like any other business. Um, and then one thing I wanted to add was that um, when it comes to um, pulling out um, equity from your house uh, and you're looking at, you know, what is this annualized rate of return on this investment versus what are we um, going to be borrowing at, basically, uh, and that difference, one thing to keep into mind for all those that are listening is to keep in, uh, I have to turn that off, uh, to keep in mind uh, that you got to add in like the total cost. So for example, like if you have like actual expenses with that property and some other other things, like the, the total um, amount that um, that you're uh, taking it out at. So if, if there's an annualized interest rate, if there's annualized fees, if there's anything like regarding that uh, that loan, um, and then in total uh, annualized uh, to what your total annualized return could be. So um, some people are like, oh my god, three percent. You know, it's like, well, it's like four and a half after you add everything yeah. back. But anyway, to just get it right. Um, and then I want to ask you, so that kind of explains, you know, how you got started and then to getting to traction and then so starting to syndicate deals and then seeing, you know, that it was producing uh, cash on cash returns, uh, seeing that on sale, it's producing returns. Um, and I guess in your um, in your world or however you want to answer this, what would be probably your biggest uh, biggest lesson so far? Yeah, definitely. I think really just kind of how you mentioned before, I love that you mentioned that I've never talked on that on a podcast, just that gap in terms of pre um, receiving a lot of that return. So, I mean, for us, especially when you're getting into the mindset of generating, creating a business and creating income or investing or something like that, there is that overlap. And I mean, for us, even like when we are getting returns, we're putting it all back into our business. So for us, I mean, and a lot of business owners, they do the same thing. So they're not even receiving 
like some returns or capital expense, um, yeah, basically returns um, for a while. And so really being patient with that and then talking to other people about what they've done. I mean, for us, it's definitely living below our means. We were at the point where we had had our second daughter and we were looking to upgrade our house and buy a bigger house. And that biggest lesson there was like, Hey, if we live below our means and decrease some of our expenses, we're ju- we have all this extra money coming in that we can push out to investments. And it's a not a get rich quick thing. It's a you know slow over time creating this snowball of wealth. And for us, it just made sense to live below our means for the next you know five years to get all this income that we're getting from our business, put it back into our business to really keep growing. And then you have the effect of compounding. That's one of the biggest ways, or that is the way that Warren Buffett is so wealthy. Literally, it's just you know taking these uh, subsidiary companies that they have, and then they reinvest and reinvest, reinvest. That's the power of insurance. You know, for example, is it's constantly reinvesting those premiums. So that's one company over here that's invested in um, index funds, which is reinvesting other things from their real estate companies. And so it's like this Mm -hmm. quadruple compounding effect. And so if you're able to set that up, you know, you do it one time and kind of get comfortable with how it works. And then like you're mentioning, you know, uh, reinvesting, 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 then this compounding effect becomes incredible over like a 10 year span. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, um, that's very powerful. That's a great lesson, you know, to add to our listeners. What, you know, Savannah, what would you say has been your biggest win? Um, really, I think for me doing this with my husband, my husband and I started our business together. Um, we started Willow Investment Group and we're doing these syndications together and we definitely have our hard moments. It is difficult running a business with your spouse. Um, but the ability to now celebrate these successes and all the wins together is just so amazing. And the support system to get through the tough times and the obstacles and to be able to bounce ideas off each other, like that's honestly the biggest win. Like I couldn't imagine doing a lot of this without him. That's awesome. Now for, for your family, like mine that, you know, has no idea how this works and, you know, it really sometimes takes for them to visually see an example. Um, has that had any effect on them to say, Oh, you know, this is something I want to get involved with, or this is something I want to emulate, or I want to, I want to know more. Does that affect Mm -hmm. your family too? So definitely some of them, yes, because we've opened up our syndications to friends and family. And Mm -hmm. so we do have, you know, a couple of family members and then friends who are interested in investing. It, it, um, you know, they're very curious about it. They didn't maybe know a lot about it or have a lot of um, background knowledge or information. And so that's kind of where we come out. I mean, that was a huge motivation behind me launching the Net Worth Nurse is to have a platform where I can have blogs and YouTube videos and just content to educate people on what multifamily syndications are and real estate investing and what kind of returns you get. And I just have everything super transparent on my website. So you can go over there and see basically everything we're doing from the inside out. And um, that was a big proponent of launching that is so that we can now educate, especially friends and family who we want to invest with us. I mean, there's definitely some that never will. They're just very, have their nest egg and their savings and they'll never kind of bridge that gap. But we are just kind of showing the proof through our lives and what we're doing, like our lifestyle that we're creating. We're continuing to take action. You know, me and we're here on Memorial Day weekend recording this podcast episode. Like, you know, we have the hustleness of keep pushing forward and growing our businesses. And they see that, you know, I have family from out of town downstairs and it's like, okay, I got to go upstairs and record a podcast. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, this is what's going on. This is, they have a real estate business. This is what they're doing. Yeah. And so we just continue to kind of lead your example. Yeah, no, I think that's incredibly powerful. Um, and it's kind of the same thing when it comes to even improving somebody's health. You know, this is financial health, right? But I have a degree in nutrition, so and then you're in the health industry, obviously. So for me, the most powerful way that I can influence other people is literally by example. I mean, I used to be in a business where, you know, people would come to you because they're forced to and they don't want to do it and they don't implement changes and they don't really care. But then when, when someone sees it by example or sees it, you know what I'm saying, like in real life, then that really um, hopefully motivates them to be able to make a better life for themselves too. So I think that what you're doing is, is powerful to affect, you know, your immediate family, friends as well. And then um, if you guys have, or we're going to have children in the future, and that's another big thing too, is being able to affect, you know, your immediate um, little people <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and exactly. build a better future, you know, generational wealth for the family. So I think what you're doing is awesome. Seriously. 
And then um, I like how you mentioned the education uh, specifically, and I could be wrong, uh, is it specifically for individuals that are in the health profession uh, that are looking to, how do I make sense of this? Okay, they're doing it, so they must be real. Like, how does that work? Yeah, definitely. So my brand, The Net Worth Nurse, is really catered towards healthcare professionals. That's just because those are my people, you Mm -hmm. know, so I have this kind of built in relationship with a lot of healthcare professionals already. So for them to kind of see my content and my um, business model, then it kind of just makes a little bit more sense to them. I don't necessarily talk all about health, but I'll occasionally write blogs comparing real estate investing to health or nursing or different things like that. But otherwise, I do have non-medical professionals investing in our deals. Um, But the net worth nurse is really, yeah, I mean, I got the videos on there and It's kind of just a place where healthcare professionals, when I talk to them, like I do meetups with them or they'll hear me on podcasts or um, even at work, um, they can come out to my website and kind of see a lot of the information that I have. But it's not, I I have other investors invest in our deals as well. Yeah. Well, could you give us a quick example of comparing, um, I guess, health to, I guess, financial health? Um, Could you give us an example of that? Yeah, definitely. I usually just talk about how my nursing skills kind of have transcribed over. But um, yeah, health, definitely. And I I touch on health in a few different areas just because when you get right with your health and you ingest or take in healthy things for your body, you're feeling good all the time. You know, people ask me, how are you working full time as a nurse, running a business, have two kids at home? And it's like, I fuel my body with, you know, I do daily juicing. I do, I usually do intermittent fasting every day. I try and do like more plant-based diet. And so I'm very specific about what I eat and consume. I do mushroom supplements. And so when I do that, I feel so good all the time that I have the energy and the motivation to knock out real estate stuff, come on and do podcasts, do write different blogs and do that sort of stuff. And so it's really just like a basis and a foundation of what you're consuming really outpours, I mean, out of you. So even with financial stuff, if you're on your commutes or before you go to bed, reading real estate books or investing books or your business books, and you're listening to podcasts about financial wealth and building wealth um, every day when you go to work, like that will, you start immersing yourself in, in that sort of information, it will start outpouring from you. Yeah. Cause it becomes, I guess, second nature or, you know, it's just, yeah, that's, that's a really good comparison. I mean, um, <laughs> because I think not that it's impossible by any means. I think some of my best investors are doctors, but um, some of them, it's just kind of like hard to bridge that gap unless uh, the easiest ones it seems to be or medical professionals or who have some sort of a business of their own and they're like oh I get it this is a business I have a business mm-hmm. like I understand that there's risks there's rewards there's a profit and loss statement like all that kind of stuff um, yeah. we have supplies there, there's there's ways that we make money you know etc so um, I think that that's awesome that you're able to do that comparison um, and especially for individuals who are you know nurses maybe they're not doctors but um, individuals that they, they make some good money, you know, and they're able mm-hmm. to save some of it up or be able to uh, save it and then be able to invest it to make more profits without having to work more. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's, it's pretty powerful to compare it that way. Um, Savannah, I just wanted to thank you so much for coming on today. Um, and I like how you mentioned all of the different content that you're creating. If anyone that is reading this later or listening to this later wants to get a hold of you and watch some of your content, where are the best places to do that? Yeah, definitely. So the the net worth nurse, that's my handle on all social media accounts. So that's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I do post a lot of different stuff. I like people to have an inside look of kind of what I'm doing, especially with my business and some of my, some stuff with my family too. And my website's www.thenetworthnurse.com. If you're remotely interested in anything I've been saying, please reach out to me. I would love to connect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and being able to give up these opportunities to people helps to empower them and be able to give them a better future. So, I mean, it's, it's, not, um, it's not something to, to skirt off or to not explore, you know, whether you're comfortable learning. You know, there's some people in the syndication space that come from an engineering background so that you can kind of understand where they come from, come from a nursing background, et cetera. So anyone that's listening that has a medical background, I really encourage you to reach out to Savannah uh, so that it makes sense. And then maybe if it doesn't, she can make it make sense for you. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today to Number One Leading Ladies. Savannah, thank you very much for being on today, and I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thank you. My pleasure. The recording.